the title of the talk is, let me just find it, Consciousness is Non-Dual. Yeah, it's a bit of a lame talk, title. But you get the picture of what we're going to talk about. <laughs> it's hard digging up titles, I can tell you. To me, uh, non-duality is super simple. It's not a complex subject. But I remember when I was seeking, it took me years and years and years to have these awakenings and to grasp what was being talked about, just on an intellectual level, let alone experiential. Because it's so alien to the mind and the mind is always looking in itself for its answers and this is actually beyond the mind, beyond thinking. So non-duality is beyond what you think. So right here in the experience, the idea is there is somebody in these bodies experiencing life so that's what everybody thinks like i am jane and i'm experiencing life i'm a doctor i have three kids i'm pregnant i love chocolate i am tall and blonde i'm white i am norwegian I'm sure they don't have janes in norwegian I think that's Norwegian name. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Jane feels very English. So there is this idea that that person is actually somebody that exists and is a separate entity experiencing life and walking through life and maneuvering through life so separate from the world and maneuvering through through this world This is actually an idea which then becomes energetic. So it's an idea that you are thinking and it becomes an energetic expression in the body. And the whole of society is hypnotized by this. Everybody believes that they are separate people with a very busy agenda, toddling around this world, world like many things to do, busy, busy person, got lots of things to do.
is actually that's not true that's a description of the body so you could say there is a character that appears that contains that description so it's not like I am acting like Amelia or Donald or Raymond or all these other people this Lisa character, this body, has its similar expressions and its patterns and ways of being. But it's not an entity and it's not a solid thing. It's something that's in flux and always changing and evolving and growing. is so amazing. And then there is something else which is experiencing, but it's the most intimate sense of being is this empty looking and the sense of aliveness. The sense of I am, this is, and it's empty looking. You could call it consciousness, the sense of being, whatever you like. But we could also call it no thing, which is all things. So the Buddhists would say that consciousness too is form. It's kind of. also kind of not form. You could say it's like a bridge between no thing and everything. Like in order for this life to appear, that's to be consciousness, otherwise there would be nothing. It's the birthright when you wake up in the morning. Like you wake up, you think that you weren't conscious and then you wake up. But it's actually not what's happening. There is always consciousness, but in sleep there is not the appearance of things. And then in waking up, the appearance of things happen. So it's just that things come back and then there's this little person that says, I'm awake, me, and I am Jeremy. Hello. Yes. You walk in your din dins, there's just your dessert. Um, yeah, so wake up and then there's an the appearance of somebody and they're like, I am Jeremy. Jeremy. Jer- Jerry. Let's just call him Jerry. Jeremy. Ah, well, 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 well. Jerry. I am Jerry. And then there's a claiming of experience. But there's actually something there prior to your thinking about yourself and then this energetic felt sense of yourself. There is this watching that happens. This empty looking.
and the sense of a tense beingness. And that's actually your birthright. You don't lose that. It doesn't go to sleep. It's just that the focus is literally on the person and the seeking of the person. So the seeking is what keeps that attachment to the person. And the seeking is so ironic, the loop of it. The seeking is looking for consciousness in things, even though it doesn't feel like that. So, so you're looking for home in things. So as soon as you arise, you always feel like you lost something. For the illusory you arises and there is this separation. There is always a sense of losing something. So then that sense of losing something creates the seeking. And then there is a looking backwards and forwards in time. for that, but it doesn't even know it's looking for that. So what it thinks it's looking for is money. Money will allow me to rest. A woman will allow me to rest. A man will allow me to rest. Children will. Uh, houses will. Property will. Different society will. Getting the big V or the little or no V. V, 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 V. Having more friends or less friends, more time or less time, having to work or not work, there's always this idea that that will free me. And then that creates the attachment to the person. So in all spiritual traditions, it's all, no, not all spiritual traditions, but a lot of them, it's always about craving for pleasure and avoiding pain. And this attachment to the outcomes of pleasure and pain Craving, craving, craving. I want, I want, I want. So even in this talk, the you is most will be sitting there waiting for that moment when it gets this. Waiting for that moment when it feels this. Like tapping on the door, asking me to give you something. And then the person thinks, okay, so I've got to not seek. And that's not it either. What is it that's beyond that? What is it in the experience that's beyond the seeking and the aversion? What is here? Mind is like trying to control, trying to get things, trying to make things this certain way. Trying to, to avoid things. It's not talking about you becoming like a hu human pacifier, like really passive. But that happened to me for a period and then... But it certainly does most probably make you more passive on the human level. But it's not about you as a human becoming passive and just always giving in and saying, I don't need that. It's recognizing this contentment that's here no matter what and then you still act out you know what's more pleasurable and what's less painful there can be these stages when the person claims it or not even necessarily the person but the body gets into this dynamic where it stops asserting what it wants because it's so content with the absolute but that doesn't really work in life 
because then other people get what they want and other people's drives might not be balanced. So I'm not talking about that, so it's not like you've got to do something to become passive. What's got to happen, and it's not really a you activity, but it might seem like an activity, is continuously moving back, 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 or forward, 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 because there's no place. But it's like the person is seeking, the person is trying to control the situation because it feels uncomfortable. And it's what is free here. It's not ignoring feelings or pushing feelings away. So if you're feeling afraid, like you're out and there's a dog like, <laughs> um, and it made you feel afraid, it's, um, it's not pushing that experience away on the human level. It's really embracing that experience. So it's actually the opposite towards you, what you think. It's really embracing the experience because there is absolute presence. Like it's like you could say in a really crass way, like there you become really present, but it's not you trying to become present. It's like a recognition of something that's always present. And then when there's more attention in that, it's like there it's you're really here. You're really experiencing what's happening. You're not in some imagination, you're not in some dream, you're not holding your breath, waiting for something. You're really experiencing the heart thumping as you feel fear as that dog's like <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that because I don't actually have fear of dogs. Oh sometimes I suppose I do, but generally I don't have fear of dogs, like very rarely, even if they come up like really barking and growling at you. I've got a picture of Khaleesi here, but maybe that's making me think of it. Yeah, so it's like really, you're really present to the experience. You know, so that's why for years I've been harping on about the chakra, you know, getting more used to the experience, because what happens is we have fear. So fear, we can feel fear in the heart, but it generally tends to be in the sacral chakra or the stomach. And that what, what happens in most people is that feeling feelings is too much effort and work and too tiring and they haven't got time. So they detach from the feelings and they pull their attention up into their head. So their head is quite tight and they just become a walking around head. And then the way that they do with it, this is unconscious is then you begin to start telling your story, a story about something else. So if you're afraid of something, so say if a dog comes running at you barking, you pull the attention to heart head and start thinking about what a terrible owner it they is, how, how they are, how dare they do this. And then there's a blame story. And what, what that's actually doing, it's a defense mechanism, is stopping you feeling the actual feelings. And then there is a focus on the thinking. And most probably in this process, like thinking really gets less, but I can't really notice anymore. But there's still thinking that happens here. But you, the focus is on what you are. It's not on the one that's thinking, the one that's like avoiding and trying not to be things. But it's also like not like going into the emotions all the time and trying to fix them or trying to work them out. It's more like an embracing of whatever is occurring in this moment. They're not pushing anything away. And psychology helps because when you really don't understand yourself, then what tends to happen is you're caught up in unconscious stories an unconscious seeking. But it's also not figuring yourself out. That's part of what seems to happen prior to this awakening. It's really the switch of identification from the person to the consciousness. So, or the switch of retention, I don't know what you call it, or this energetic expansion. But who you are is this consciousness now, right? now that's all you ever look for and all the problems that you think you have need a lot less attention than what you think like sometimes they need attention because we think about problems in order to fix them and to get the best results but what you're really looking for is what you are which is this 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 and it's so intimate 
it's so close like who you're listening to now it seems like it's Lisa the character because it's coming out of the body and we could say in time it's Lisa the character but who you're looking at and what's speaking and looking back at you is actually yourself as consciousness so same energy And what's actually looking there is consciousness. You're not, you're not actually somebody looking at me. It's actually consciousness looking at itself in everything, in all things. And this is a freedom. And the person's never content with that. It's always, I want more, 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 more. You don't, you really don't. You just want what is. You just want what is. It's so simple. We could have such an amazing society if this is recognised, like such beauty. I mean, there's still going to be traumas and difficulties, but it's such a different way of being like our society is created out of what all individuals in this like hive mind feel so what we create is like a very contracted society with lots of rules and regulations i mean there's great things about society but there's also like um a lot of control like controlling other people's experience like a lot of distrust And a lot of overwork and in the west i think we work the least but like really slogging ourselves when we don't need to we don't need to we can go slower it's okay to evolve slower almost would we be better because more of a heart's going into it and presence like i find now everything i do is better well, I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions to that, like whenever I make some up statements of myself, but I mean like, because I'm more present, it's just better what I do. You know, when you really give your heart to something, you're just gonna flourish at it. And if you're giving your heart to life, to everything, and there is a flourishing. <laughs>